Brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and in our worship, we're reminded that heaven's door is a narrow door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for today is recorded in Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 22. Jesus went on his way from one town and village to another, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? He said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know you or where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown outside. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And note this, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Lord, strengthen our faith as we feast on your word. Help us to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may glorify you in everything we do. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, I don't know how many of you have ever been involved in moving large furniture or appliances, but if you have, then you know how frustrating it is when you have a house full of narrow doors. It seems that no matter how you twist and turn that furniture, it simply will not fit through those doors. You may even begin to think that the furniture was there first, when the house was actually built around it. A narrow door is usually a disadvantage and causes lots of problems. Now, strange as it may seem, today Jesus tells us that the door which leads to heaven is a narrow door a door which causes a great deal of problems for many people. The door is narrow, but since it's the only correct door, we must strive to enter the narrow door before it's closed. When our text begins, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He doesn't appear to be in much of a hurry because he takes his time and teaches in the towns and villages along the way. Jesus was a good teacher, as he shows us here when he answered a person's question. The person asked, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? Now, in Jesus' day, it was a widely held Jewish assumption, endorsed by the rabbis, that the entire Jewish nation would be saved. That would involve many people, not just a few. A somewhat parallel assumption today would be that the Roman Catholic Church is the only true church, and therefore only Roman Catholics will be in heaven, or only Wells Lutherans will be in heaven, or only 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses will be in heaven. Heaven is not the exclusive property of any outward religious den denomination. Only a few will be saved, but salvation will not be based on having a certain ancestry, or name, or social status, or congregation membership. It will be based entirely on faith in Jesus. For that reason, this person would have asked a better question if he had asked, Lord, no matter how many or how few will be saved, how do I get to be one of them? In reality, that's the question which Jesus answered. He said, strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. 
This isn't the first time that Jesus has referred to the narrow door. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter through it. How narrow is the gate, and how difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The wide door may look like it's the easier path, because in reality, it is. But the wide door won't get you where you want to go, because the wide door is the wrong door. The narrow door is the correct one, and Jesus emphasizes that we must strive to enter the narrow door. The Greek word that's used here is agonizo, to agonize or to wrestle. It's a fierce struggle against powerful opponents, Satan, sin, and self. To strive is to make every effort, to exert yourself fully, to strain every muscle to its limits, and and to call upon all of our strength and energies. It isn't easy to do battle against the devil and his forces in the world. It isn't easy to daily drown our own sinful flesh with contrition and repentance. But the Lord Jesus himself says that we must strive to do so. Many people will attempt to enter the narrow door by using a minimum of effort. They feel that simply knowing who Jesus is or having a casual or past acquaintance with him will be good enough. They're the people who say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But Jesus will reply to them, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. Being familiar with Jesus isn't the same as being committed to him. Today those people would sound more like this. Why should God take me to heaven? Well, I'm pretty good, and I used to come to church pretty often. I even used to teach Sunday school, and my dad was on the church council for years. Some of them also sound like this. I don't understand why I can't be a member of Trinity anymore. Oh, I know I've only been in church a few Sundays in the past ten years. I can't even remember the last time I received the Lord's Supper, but I still come for the baptisms, confirmations, marriages, and funerals in the family, and I hardly ever miss a Christmas Eve service. Yes, and some of them even sound like this. Pastor, I know I should be in church more often, but you know how hard it is to stay awake on Sunday morning after a late Saturday night. Now, I can be sympathetic or unsympathetic with those individuals, but you tell me, are such people making every effort to enter the narrow door? And, if they're not, how do you think Jesus would respond to them? Striving means hard work and great sacrifices. And yet, if we try to earn our salvation through our great effort and our numerous good works, then our efforts are useless, misdirected, and wasted. The victory for such hard-fought battles can't rest in our sinful human hands. Going back to that analogy of moving furniture, you can tear up a lot of woodwork and scratch and dent a lot of furniture if you try to muscle your way through a door which is too narrow. Getting through the narrow door which leads to heaven requires the perfection of Jesus, perfection which he gives to those who follow him. The victory in the battle for salvation has been won by Jesus. It's up to us to strive, to make every effort not to earn salvation, but to hang on to Jesus. In his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul wrote, Continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In fact, it is God who is working in you both to will and to work for the sake of his good pleasure. It is God's purpose that we follow his Son. And that's why we need to come to church. That's why we need to study the Bible. That's why we need to make the changes and sacrifices in our lives which allow us to gratefully respond to God's love 
in everything we do. We need to be following Jesus and not following the things of this world. The door to heaven is truly narrow, but it's wide enough, wide enough to let in, in even the chief of sinners as long as that sinner is following his Savior. That is, the door is wide enough until it's closed. Again, we read, once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. What that means is that we don't have forever to become followers of Jesus. The time will come when the master will close the door and not allow us to come in. Jesus is the master of heaven. When does he close the door to that eternal home? It's at the time of our death, or on the judgment day, whichever comes first. The days of our life are the days when we must come to faith in Jesus and strive to enter the narrow door, because once that door is closed, it will be too late. It'll be like it was in the days of Noah, when God closed the door of the ark with only eight people inside. The thousands of others who died in the great flood had been given 120 years to repent of their wicked lives and believe, but they refused to listen to Noah and his preaching. After all, what did that senile old goat know about real life? He spent most of his time building a huge boat in a place where there wasn't even any water. Surely they didn't have to worry about anything he had to say. So they weren't worried about their potential destruction. And besides, they didn't have time for repenting and learning about God and his word. They were too busy, too busy working or playing or, or doing other important things. You know, the things which life is really all about, or so they thought. But when the rains started falling harder and harder each day, and the water started getting deeper and deeper, suddenly Noah became smarter and smarter. They changed their minds and tried to get into the ark. But it was already too late. The door had been closed. Do you know of people who are headed toward that big, wide door that leads to hell? Do you know of people who are trying to effortlessly sneak in the narrow door of heaven instead of making every effort? Do you know of people who have focused their lives on the wrong door? People who are so completely consumed with building up their education or their job that in the process they've chosen to delay following Jesus. And do you know of people who unfortunately waited too long only to find the narrow door closed for them by death. Dear friends, now is the time to act. Thousands of people are daily rushing to their destruction like lemmings rushing into the sea. Many of those people are known by us. While there's still time, lead them to the narrow door. Lead them to Jesus. And Jesus, in turn, will take them by the hand and guide them safely through the narrow door into heaven. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we've gathered as members of your church to join our hearts in confessing our faith in you. We believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, we believe that you became a man so that as our substitute, you might suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. As we continue to look toward the future, we ask that you would make us steadfast and true in confessing our faith to others. Let not the unbelief and ridicule with which many people respond to your name discourage us from testifying of our faith or from declaring our love for you. May we never be ashamed of you or in any way deny you. Lord, looking back on the past, we must admit that we have at times failed in our mission as your witnesses. 
Our many sins have formed barriers to confessing your name to others. Moments of doubt have robbed our testimony of vitality and conviction. There have been times when our lack of knowledge concerning your will and your word has been a hindrance to our testifying to the truth. There have been occasions when the Holy Spirit has thrown the door wide open for us, giving us splendid opportunities to confess you to others. But we remained silent. There were times when we were timid, when we should have been bold, and times when we were filled with fear, when we should have been filled with confidence. Dear Savior, don't hold these human failures against us, but rather forgive our sins. And through your Holy Spirit, supply whatever we need to make us your bold, efficient, and faithful witnesses to the world. Give us the desire and the opportunity to study your word frequently and faithfully. Enlarge our understanding of that word. Deepen our appreciation for the salvation which you have earned for us. And increase our zeal to confess your saving name to the world. Let your glory, which shines in all your words and works, light up our hearts and shine through us to others. Daily increase the number of those who come to know you as their Savior and help them to become and remain faithful witnesses. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.